the bold and the beautiful spoilers tease that Thorne and Bill's feud will continue. B and B fans know that Bill blames Thorne for the latest custody drama. He believes Thorne's the only reason Katie wants to take Will away from him. As a result, Bill will try to put Thorne in his place on Tuesday's new B and B episode. He'll shout that Thorne doesn't get an opinion on his son and he never will. Of course, Thorne will think he has every right to protect the people he cares about. He's dating Katie, so he intends to do what's best for her boy. Thorne will keep pushing Katie to seek sole custody, so Will's going to remain at the center of the conflict. The bold and the beautiful spoilers say Bill will be willing to play dirty if need be, but so will Thorne. Since Will's been burned by Bill lately, he won't want to hang out with his dad. Naturally, Thorne will think that proves Bill shouldn't be around his kid. He'll plan on using Will's disdain for Bill as ammo in the custody case. Meanwhile, Liam will feel a bit out of place in Stuffy's home. Now that he's moved out, things will be awkward during his latest visit. However, Steffi won't want Liam to think he's not welcome. She'll argue that he can still spend as much time with Kelly as he wants. By the end of their chat, Liam should feel more comfortable with the idea of dropping by. Unfortunately, Hope could battle some jealousy soon. As her ultrasound appointment draws near, Hope will go off in search of new husband and baby daddy. She'll find Liam with Steffi and Kelly, so there could be some tension in the room. Hope supports Liam's other family but she doesn't want him to neglect his family with her. She may suspect that his child with Steffi is always going to come first. Sadly, another incident will feed Hope's suspicions later this week, August 27th to 31st. It sounds like there's already trouble in Lope Paradise. We'll give you updates as other bold and the beautiful news comes in. At Forrester in the photo studio area backstage, Emma and Zoe were looking through two wheeled clothes racks that had been set up in an L shape. Xander stood behind Emma, remarking upon how quickly Steffi had gotten the intimate line back up and running. Zoe started to comment, but Emma cut off her, noting that Steffi had arrived. Steffi greeted everyone and stopped at a table where Quinn was accessorizing two models. Quinn said she'd added more jewelry at Steffi's request. Steffi didn't have a lot of time and asked if Xander understood what she was looking for. Xander said he wasn't a photographer, but he could capture the looks she wanted. Emma was surprised that Xander was the photographer that day. Xander clarified that, in Zach's absence, Xander was just documenting the pairings for later review. Touching his elbow, Zoe asked if Emma didn't know that Xander was a Renaissance man, into amateur graphic design and photography, and there was nothing he couldn't do. Steffi asked Emma to help Xander gather the models. Hopping on stage, Zoe teased that she was ready for her close-up. Emma scowled. Quinn explained some of her jewelry material choices to Steffi and asked if Ridge had signed off on all of this. Steffi assumed Quinn meant to ask if Steffi had gotten Ridge's approval on the direction Steffi was taking the line. Steffi asserted that she had full control over it. Quinn replied that she knew it, and Steffi was the reason it would be a success. Steffi got on stage and asked if everyone had heard Quinn. Steffi repeated that it would be a success. As everyone cheered, Ridge arrived. He told his daughter that, for what it was worth, he liked what he was seeing. Steffi said it meant a lot for her father and co CEO to say it. Steffi announced the beginning of the test run through and started the music. At the end of the runway with a tablet, Xander took pictures and filmed the group of male and female models who rotated on and off stage. Nearby, Emma watched and paid attention to Zoe's coquettish turns as she lingered in front of Xander. After the review, Quinn updated the models and interns on what Steffi had thought of the show. Danny asked when the showing would be. Zoe offered to model the show's topper and reminded everyone that she'd model the HFTF show's topper. Emma chimed in that it had only been because the other model had sprained her ankle and Zoe had happened to be the right size. Danny noted that somebody was throwing shade and asked what was up with it. Quinn adjourned the meeting and asked Emma and Xander to stay to help break down the review area. Taking Zoe aside, Emma said Steffi had given Emma notes to pass on. Still wearing a skirted teddy, Zoe asked if Emma was Steffi's assistant. Emma wanted to get it over with. Zoe said she was all Emma's. Xander approached with a devouring expression on his face, and Emma decided that Zoe should get dressed first. Zoe asked if Emma was an assistant or the boss. 
Quinn called for Emma, and Emma walked off. Zoe told Xander that she thought Emma would never leave. He asked Zoe if she'd go easy on Emma. Zoe pulled Xander to the other side of the clothes rack to have privacy and respect for Emma's feelings. Zoe thanked Xander for not making her go back to London. She appreciated her job at Forrester and liked what was between her and Xander. Maybe a bit more eventually, she said and kissed him. In the CEO's office, Ridge was proud of Steffi and said she was doing what she'd set out to do. Steffi was glad to have a fan. Questioning that there was just one, Rich stated that the models and interns would do anything for her, and he was happy that the Bill chapter was behind her. He said Bill had caused a lot of damage and was still at it. Rich told Steffi about Katie possibly filing for full custody of Will and said Thorne believed that Bill's neglect over the last months had really hurt the child. Steffi empathized with Katie but said God only knew how Bill would react to such an action. At Katie's house, Bill asked if Katie would actually go through with suing for sole custody. Thorne said Bill had given Katie no choice. Bill ordered Thorne to shut up because it didn't concern Thorne. Disagreeing, Katie stated that Thorne cared about their son. Assuming she thought Bill didn't, Bill said she knew how much he loved their child. Katie replied that it wasn't about love. It was about stability and security. Bill said he was there, trying to fix it, and that was all that mattered. She disagreed, saying his actions mattered more than words. Bill didn't want to talk about it in front of Lurch, and Thorne asked if Bill felt threatened. Bill advised Katie to tune out the white noise and let it be just the two of them. He didn't believe she had a case and asked why she'd do this to him. Thorne said Bill had been a father for months. The angry Bill said he wouldn't keep warning Thorne to mind his own business. Thorne claimed to be making it his business. Bill lunged at Thorne, but Katie pushed him back. Thorne said he cared about Katie and Will. Katie said Thorne wasn't helping, and she told Bill that she didn't want Will to hear them. In a loud voice, Bill suggested that she get rid of the jackass, so she and Bill, Will's parents, could talk it out. Katie insisted that Thorne had been there for Will for a while, and Bill hadn't been. Bill conceded to Katie that he shouldn't have let parts of his life compromise his relationship with his son, however, he was there to fix it and she didn't need to go to extremes. He believed that they'd been co-parenting just fine and said they still could. Katie wished she could believe it, but Bill had disappointed the child. She could see what it had done to Will, and she had to protect him. So do I, Bill said. He wanted Katie and Thorne to listen closely. Bill declared that there was no way he'd let her strip him of custody. Katie asked Bill to calm down. Bill refused to let her to tell him to calm down after she'd threatened to go after his son. Thorne claimed that no one was going after Will. Bill accused Thorne of trying to convince Katie that Bill was a bad influence on his son. Thorne contended that Bill had to be present to be any kind of influence. Bill accused Thorne of stirring the pot. Katie said it wasn't true, but Bill challenged her to say that she hadn't heard anything about sole custody until that day from Thorne. Thorne told Bill to stop attacking Katie. Bill denied doing so and said he was trying to get to the truth. Bill admitted to becoming distracted, but Katie and Thorne balked at the word. Bill doubled down on it, saying he'd been distracted because he ran a conglomerate, not a dress factory. Thorne contended that Bill had been distracted because he destroyed his son's marriage in hopes of pursuing his daughter-in-law. Katie didn't know how she could be confident that Bill wouldn't do something devastating to Will. It was nonsense to Bill, and he'd heard enough of it. Bill claimed that he'd been patient and he had tried to reach out to Katie. But if you are delusional enough to actually pursue this custody, oh, how I will fight you, Bill vowed. He reminded her that he liked nothing better than a bare knuckle brawl and that she had skeletons in her closet, too. He egged her to bring the war on and said she would lose. It sounded like a threat to Thorne. Bill stated that he was 